In this problem, it says that we have a seven horsepower shaft pump that we're, so a seven horsepower pump, and we're using it to raise water to an elevation of 15 meters. And it says, if the mechanical efficiency of the pump is 82%, determine the maximum flow rate, or maximum volumetric flow rate of the water. So the efficiency is 0 0.82. And we're looking for the volumetric flow rate of the water. So I'm just going to put a question mark on that. So first of all, I'm going to draw a picture of what I'm doing. I usually like to draw a picture just so things are a little more clear. So it says I'm raising water to an elevation of 15 meters. So I'm just going to put some water here. So I have water. And then I have a pump. And let's just say that it's pumping water up to like a tank or something. It doesn't specify, but so we're pumping water from one to two. And this is a height of 15 meters. Okay, so before we start solving the problem, let's first of all write down some assumptions. So I'm going to put assumptions. First of all, we're going to assume that this is steady flow. So the water is flowing through the pump steadily, so we're not in a startup or shutdown of the pump. We're going to assume that the water is incompressible and that it's frictionless, so frictionless flow. And we're going to assume that the elevation difference is constant. So elevation difference is constant. And a couple other assumptions we can make. First of all, we can assume that the change in kinetic energy is zero. And <clears throat> I'm going to do that because I'm going to assume that the water here has a pretty low velocity and the water here has a pretty low velocity. And I'm also going to say that the change in the pressure is zero. And so just a quick note on that. I can say that because I've assumed I'm looking, my reference points are here and here. And so both of these points are in our, the pressure is atmospheric. So I can assume that the change in pressure is zero because the change in pressure is equal to P2 minus P1, the pressure at P2 is P atmospheric, and the pressure at P1 is P atmospheric, so this is equal to zero. Um, if I had have said that, like, let's just erase these reference points for a second. If I had have said that my reference point was right here and right here, so basically on either side of the pump, like inside of the pipes, then this is assumption I can't make because then I'm going to have a pressure change or a pressure drop. So you need to be clear about where your reference points are. So I'm saying it's right here. I'm saying that reference point one is here at the surface of the water we're pumping. And reference point two is at the surface of the water at wherever it's being pumped to. And the d also I'm going to write down that the density of the water is 1,000 kilograms meters cubed. Since this is a pump and there's no temperature differences anywhere, all of the energy being added to the system is from is from work. So basically it's mechanical energy. So what I want to do is calculate or write down the equation for the mechanical energy. So E mechanical is equal to and then this is just equal to the mass flow rate multiplied by the change in kinetic energy plus the change in so the flow energy so change in pressure so delta p over rho plus the change in potential energy So we've already determined that the change in kinetic energy is zero and the change in pressure is zero. So 
the those two terms are zero, so we're just left with m dot multiplied by the change in potential energy, so delta PE, and this is equal to m dot multiplied by gravity multiplied by delta Z. Alright, so this is where we need to think about this problem a little bit. So we have, so we're asked what the maximum volumetric flow rate of the water is and this equation has the mass flow rate, so what we want to do is replace that mass flow rate with the, with the volumetric flow rate. So the mass flow rate is equal to the density multiplied by the volumetric flow rate. So then we can write that this delta E mech mechanical energy is equal to the density multiplied by the volumetric flow rate, multiplied by gravity, multiplied by delta Z. So this is what we're solving for. So since we're solving for the volumetric flow rate, we need to calculate what this mechanical energy is. So we can do that because it tells us that, it tells us the power of the pump. So it tells us that it's a seven horsepower pump. And so that means that this is equal to the efficiency of the pump multiplied by the power of the pump. So this is equal to 0 0.82, so the efficiency is 82%, multiplied by 7 horsepower. So this is equal to 5.74 horsepower. And so now what we can do is just solve, so I'm, I'm actually just going to solve this equation for the volumetric flow rate and then um, and then I'm going to and then I'm going to plug in some numbers and solve for what the volumetric flow rate is. So the volumetric flow rate is equal to this 5.74 horsepower over rho g delta z. So this is equal to 5.74 horsepower over 1,000 kilograms meter cubed multiplied by 9.8 meters per second squared multiplied by, and then the height that the water's being pumped is 15 meters. And then we need to um, do some conversions, so it's... Well, I'm going to convert the horsepower to watts. So there's 745.7 watts in one one horsepower is equal to 745.7 watts. And then there's one newton meter per second per one watt. And then one newton is kilogram meter second squared, so one kilogram meter second squared over one newton. So now let's cancel out some units. So the horsepower cancels. Um, the watts cancel, Newton cancels, let's see, kilograms cancel, and the meters cubed, so I have a meters to the fourth on the top, and these are going to cancel, and let's see, one of the seconds cancels, well, second squared cancels. So the volumetric flow rate, this works out to 0 0.291 meters cubed per second, per second. And so this is, these are the units that we expect because it's a volumetric flow rate. So we expect the units to be a volume per time. 
And I encourage you to go through and work through these units and just verify for yourself that they all cancel out correctly and you're left with the correct unit.